watching. Today I'm so excited to be interviewing one of my favorite local businesses. This is Alex Jangard with Heart of Timber. He's going to share a little bit about his business, his vision, what he does, and let's start with a little bit about himself. So Alex, tell us a little bit about who you are, your family, where you're from, all that. Yeah, so um, right now we're working in uh, Southeast Boise in our home run shop. Um, it's our family shop, I'd say. So my wife and I are expecting our fourth kid in April. And uh, it's, it's so nice because this supports our whole family. Um, my wife stays home. She probably works harder than I do. <laughs> With four kids, she just might. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say so. And um, so I grew up in Northwestern Washington, um, about an hour and a half north of Seattle, uh, in the San Juan Islands. And came over to Boise State. My wife and I went there. She's from Twin Falls. Okay. Um, and then we graduated, got married, and then started having kids. <laughs> and, yeah. um, this started as kind of a side hustle um, in college. So I grew up really blue collar, like tinkering on engines, fixing stuff, just digging holes since I was like eight, you know, all kinds of stuff. And I was tired of not doing that in school. It was very like, you know, university life, go to class, whatever, do your thing, and then nothing. So um, houses, uh, it's a funny story, like houses was a big thing in my family. So I was tired of my hands being soft, yeah, you know? Yeah, uh -huh. So I started tinkering um, in our, so one car garage that we started, we rented that place. That's where Heart of Timber started, I guess. Um, and then from there, we moved to a bigger shop. That's where we met. And uh, it was a two car garage. Now we're in a three car garage with the shop. So it's, uh, it's grown from there. It's been great. So cool. I love that. Yes, we did. Gorgeous dining room sign. Oh my gosh, I still love it. <laughs> I still love that. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about Heart and Tim. Heart and Tim, I know you started saying where it came from, all of that. But um, what is it? What do you do? Give us a rundown of the business itself. Yeah, so right now our core business is building tables for families that want to feel more proud of the space that they're in. So um, whether it's a family that loves gathering with friends and family or just their own like intimate yeah. uh, family. We also build tables like conference tables for businesses that are looking up their style or move to offices, something like that. Um, and then the last thing is commercial. So the uh, the still downtown in Boise. Oh yes, my favorite ice cream shop. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, those guys are crushing it. Yeah. And um, so we did their stuff. We've done paddles at Pokey, um, and we're going to be doing their locations. So. The local businesses have really reached out in support of this that we're doing. It's not just me, it's a lot of makers do a lot of things. But Tables is the core business. We will be introducing more of a home customs project um, this year, like accent walls. Nice! Um, yeah, so that will be fun. It actually started as more of a sign, like a home goods. Mm -hmm. So like Idaho cutouts and name signs. Yeah. Those were just so hard. We had to produce so much volume. Um, they're so low margin. Yeah. But now, We've graduated into really nice dining tables, everything from you know starting at a four hundred dollar coffee table all the way up to ten thousand dollar conference tables, very big statement pieces. Yeah. Um, and our whole thing is basically just helping people feel proud of their style, their vibe, their home, whatever their space is. I love that. Um, yeah, it was important to us. I love that. So, how do you think of the name Heart of Timber? Um, quite honestly, I was writing a huge list of names. <laughs> right, and the hardest part about starting a business yeah. is the name. Yeah, and I would uh, search on different social platforms to see if the handle was available, Heart of Timber happened to be available. There's nothing crazy behind yeah. uh, the meaning. You you could make a marketing pitch that is very, you know, integral to it, but I think as the company continues to grow, it'll mean a little bit more. Yeah. Um, for me, it was mostly just the heart behind the business. It's very old school. Um, if something ever happens to a table, we just fix it. Um, and that's kind of goes along with our vibe is yeah. we're super like rooted in just doing the right thing as often as we can. We mess up all the time. And I've had things break that shouldn't have and all like it just happens. Yeah. Um, but our our hope is that we can always be doing the right thing. Um, and so that kind of ties in with the heart yeah. part of it. Yeah. That's amazing. So you talked a little bit about what products you make. Do you make them all by hand? Do you have anyone that helps you out? What's kind of your process in actually making those um, 
podcast? Yeah, so um, right now it's mostly just me in this space. Uh, it's probably 800 square feet of like garage space. Yeah. Um, and we're looking to hire, well, we've got a guy that's working part time um, nice. on kind of contract project basis. Yeah. Um, eventually we'll go to our team to a couple makers as needed. I would hate to put the cart cart before the horse, right? That's great. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we just grow as our reputation continues to grow and our products continue to expand. Um, and yeah, I think it's mostly just eventually getting to a point where we can support multiple families, um, whether the makers are doing their own thing and they're just under the hearts of the brand or whatever. Um, we work with a lot of local companies in our process, so all of the wood is from local suppliers, and if it's a live edge slab, we go to local people that, they cut local trees, which is really cool. Yeah. So a lot of the trees either come from Boise, Iridian, or the Valley, and then they're slabbed here, kiln dried here, and then they're made by makers like yourself. Home so, grown in Idaho. That's right, yeah. <laughs> I it's, love it. It's, uh, it's so unique to, say like, if you have your own dining table, it's such a piece that you gather around almost every day, and the way that we have guests there, it's it's got its own story in itself to tie into your own. So whether you want a river table with a, a color you like or a piece, we're doing we're gonna be doing tables out of a tree that was cut from the north end. It was three generations of a swing tree wow. um, from this one family, and so we were fortunate to be able to have access to those slabs. Um, but it's just really cool. So, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So it sounds like our most of your project that you do is custom for the customer, or like do you get special requests? Do you do a lot of it? Yep, most of them are made to order. Um, everybody's got a different space they're working with. There's general standard sizes. Yeah. Um, they say, oh, we want a four, six, eight person table, and then we fit it to their space, whether that's their floors or their cabinets or their paint or whatever. Um, and then in time, we'll eventually have more standard products that you can you can build online. We're working on something for our website where you can live, like, live build your oh, own cool. table, order, and then get it in six to eight weeks, you know? Okay. So, um, we'll eventually get there. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So, what's the first project you ever made? Don't be embarrassed. Yeah. First one. This thing was a no total. Cheating. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, was a hack job. Just oh, wow. brutal. <laughs> it was one of those Idaho cutouts. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, probably this big okay. and did it with a tool called the jigsaw so yeah. like by hand cutting it and I just literally drew it yeah. on a piece of paper traced it um, we put it on Etsy uh -huh. and someone one of our friends bought it um, so we started doing that put it on our wall and then friends came over and like hey I'll be 20 bucks for that or whatever yeah. so, that was where it started. Oh my gosh, wow. artists will let someone pay for it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what's your favorite project you've ever made? Um, every table that I make is always so much fun. I think to me, the closest thing to my heart is something really small that my son and my daughter and I made. We made these little, it's like an ornament size, pieces yeah. like Idaho, and we painted on them um, when they were one and a half, I think each, and now they hang in my rear view mirror in my truck. Aww. So to me, those are my favorite things because yeah. every time I go to any meeting or run and get wood, it's yeah. a reminder of like, this is why I'm doing this for my family yeah. uh, and for our customers' families, right? I think together those tie so closely. Um, it's just such a uh, personal thing to build a table for someone, whether it's a little end table or a full blown tiny table. Um, I just want to make sure that it, it means a lot to them as much as it does to me. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, awesome. So, where do you hope Pyro Timber is in five years from now? What's your big vision? Do you want to expand? What do you, what do you want to do? Yeah, I hope to be in, uh, eventually have a whole team of makers. I have no idea what the number is because it doesn't matter to me as long as everyone's happy. Yeah. Um, but I hope to have our own building where we have a showroom and a workspace. I've always had this weird dream of buying like an old fire station. Oh. Um, and because they have clear doors and you can have the shop space there so people try to buy or whatever. And then a showroom. Um, so I hope to be in a heart of timber building um, with our pieces from, again, a small to a large on display for people to walk in and design their own piece. Yeah. Um, and you know that means it would probably be two, three, four, five million dollar company yeah. um, in order to sustain the families to do that. We hope to be shipping, continue to ship. We've shipped all over the country already but um, 
pretty streamlined, you know, just pumping out tables that are, are high quality. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing is trends will continue to change, right? Like the, the epoxy, the river tables are awesome. Um, but in time continuing the trend as new things will come along. Yep. Maybe yep. tables will be 3D printed in five years, you know? Um, <laughs> so we don't know. But that's my vision is to stay agile enough to continue to help people in the biggest impact. Cool. Yeah. cool. So this is so exciting. I know so many people are probably going to want to jump on and support you. I know I do. Um, do you have a special offer for people watching this video? Yeah, so I think the Valentine's Day is coming up and one of the biggest things is uh, like an at-home date night right now. Um, I don't know what part of the country you're in with the restrictions that are going on, but <laughs> if uh, at-home date night sounds great to you, um, we make these boards that are great for a charcuterie spread or maybe a homemade dish of some kind. Um, I'd be willing to do 15% off for you guys. Um, so she'll get you the code, um, whatever that might be, and you can go follow her instructions, but I'm happy to do that, so. Perfect, yeah. awesome. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us, sharing yeah. a little bit more about fire timber and your process. I just love everything you stand for, and I can't wait to come to your fire station shop. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Thank Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.